I think everyone has joined us now. Welcome to the Voxer Compatibility Webinar. My name is Cassie, and I'm a technical support representative at Golden Software. While each Golden Software program is a standalone application, data can be used in multiple programs to produce greater multidimensional images. The layout for this webinar is going to be starting with Oracle Data and Stratter and export as a well-rendered to Voxler. They're going to export a cross-section from Stratter, then export XYZ from Stratter, and then create surface, um, surface tops in Surfer. Then we're going to import Surfer grids into Voxler. Then we're going to bind the surface data into a 3D module in Voxler. Then we're going to use Digger to get an aerial image of the site. As I discuss each process, I'll stop for a few minutes to answer any questions. Feel free to send your questions anytime to the webinar host via the questions function. The question box is on the webinar control panel. Type in your question and it will be sent to the webinar host, who will then forward it on to me. If your, question, if your control panel is minimized, click the view menu and unchecked auto hide the control panel or hide the control panel. This, wedding will, or this video will also be recorded, so after the webinar is finished, the video will be available on our website at goldensoftware.com. Okay, now let's begin. So to begin this demonstration, I've already imported and displayed borehole data in Stratter. The borehole view displays lithology logs for seven different wells. The first step is going to be to export our well data into Voxler to view it as a 3D well path. So to do this, I'm going to first click on my lithology table. Then I'm going to click Voxler, Create Well Render. And then in this Create Well Render dialog, I'm going to check to include all boreholes. I'm going to change the whole inclination source to be survey table, and that will automatically update our whole azimuth source. And then I want to specify the well color to be lithology description, which I've already preset up to be our different layers. And then I'm going to leave this export depth as ascending unchecked because the wells are going to be displayed as elevation instead of depth. And then I'm going to click OK. So now I'm going to open up Voxler. Yeah, one more time and close out of this. So Voxler, create, create well render. And change this to surface survey table and click OK. Okay. So now when we open up Boxer, we see our well pass displayed in 3D. So if we look back into our shatter file, I've already created a cross section that has three of the different wells. So this can also be exported to Voxer, to our Voxer project so the cross-section is shown between the well paths. So this, if I click Voxer export cross-section, this is going to export the cross-section to the same Voxer file with my well paths. So in this export options dialog, I'm going to specify to use an application source, and then I'm going to click OK. So now when I go back to Voxler, we're going to see our well paths are displayed along with the path. So I'm going to change our transparency so we can see the cross-section. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to load into a color map so that way I already have the same predefined fills. So to do this, I'm going to click on our well render. I'm going to click on path data. And then I'm going to click the ellipse button next to the color map. And then I'm going to click load and I'm going to select my predefined color fill. And so now our well path colors match the cross-section color scheme. So now I'm going to take a pause in for a second and ask any questions relating to exported data directly from Stratter to Voxler. Are there any questions? So the first question is, can you edit the cross-section once in Voxler? That means changing the colors or the fill patterns. Well, that's a good question. So once the cross-section is imported into Voxer, the colors and settings cannot be modified. So instead, you want to specify all of those customized settings before in Stratter. Another question is, can I have my XY values be in lat long in display in, and still display them in Voxer? So for the best display, the XYZ values should be in the same units as in the cross-section and for the well data. For example, you can have your x, y coordinates be in UTM values, which are going to be meters, and then your z, which is the depth loss of the in meters. Do we have any other questions? So 
So when I did this, why didn't the header in the map object at the bottom get exported? Well, this is from, so when you export using the export cross-section from Stratter, it only the contents in your cross-section pane will be exported. So this means that everything inside of this area will be exported, but your header and your footer pane won't. So if you want to export any of that, then you'll just make sure it's inside the cross-section pane. Oh, yep, and the next question is, can I see that cross-section stratter? So here it is in stratter, and you'll notice it's reversed, and that's because in stratter, everything is flipped, but you can specify that when you export right here. So when you click Voxler Export Cross-Section, you can choose um, for your lithology to export it the other direction. I just flipped everything as elevation instead of depth. Any other questions? So the next question is, is there any way to export XYZ C data from the wells? So that means if you already have your well traces inside of Voxler, is there a way to get the actual values of, of them? And that is possible. So to do that, you'll click on your well render model inside your network manager, which is what contains the well paths. And we can right click, I'm sorry, we'll do this on the well data and right click and do computational and then extract points. And this extract points module is going to contain your XYZ C data. So you can right click this and do save data and save it to like a DAT file or another Excel file. Or you can go ahead and use this directly with the Grinner module in Boxler. So it looks like that's it for questions on this round. So the next thing we're going to do is to create surface tops for each layer and have them intersect each well path at the desired location. So this is going to be done by going back to Voxler, and then we're going to export our XYZ data from Shatter and then grid it inside the server. So to do this, I'm going to open up Shatter and click on the Lithology tab again. And I'm going to click Data, Export XYZ Data. In this dialog, I'm going to specify where I want to save my file, and I'm going to save this as Shatter Export. And then I'm going to click Save. All right, so now if I go into Surfer and open up the data file, and this the data file contains our XYZ data for each lithology each lithology layer at the correct XYZ location for each well. So you'll notice that there are two level ones for each of the wells, and our whole IDs are in column G, and that'll differentiate between the wells. So we have two different wells, or two different layer ones, because the first is going to be that service at the start of the well, and then the second is going to be where my layer one ends. So we're going to create a surface layer for each level, which there's going to be six total ones, starting with the top layer. So to do this, I'm going to make a new worksheet in Surfer by clicking File, New, Worksheet. And then I'm going to copy the first XYZ point from each well and paste it into the new that file. So bear with me while we do this. So we're going to click on the first XYZ point for the whole ID. I'm going to copy it and then paste it into this worksheet. And I'm going to do that for each different well. And then we just have one more well left. Okay, so now that I have our XYZ points for this very top layer, I'm going to save this as a DAT file by clicking File, Save As. And I'm going to save this as Layer 1. I'm going to change it to a DAT file format and click Save. So now that I have the DAT file, I'm going to create the grid file by clicking Grid and then Data. And I'm going to pick my Layer 1 DAT and click Open. And then I'm going to make sure my XYZ columns are set correctly to columns A, B, and C. I'm going to use cricking as my default method. And then for the grid line geometry right here, I want to have the same geometry for each grid file. This way, the surfaces are the same extent and overlay in a uniform model. 
So to get the limits, I want the limits in my Voxer file to be of the entire well render. So we can do this by clicking our well render in Voxler, right clicking on and then clicking general modules and then info. And on this info tab, if we click on the geometry tab in the property manager, we can see that we have X and Y limits defined. So I've already pre-written those down and those are the limits I'm going to use for my grid line geometry. So I'm going to enter those values in. In this way, our layers are going to have the same extents and expand the same area. And then I'm going to put um, change the number of notes to be 100 by 100, and that way I have a uniform grid for each of them. And I'm going to click OK to create my grid file. So my grid file has been created. So now we're going to go back to Voxer and import the grid file. So I'm going to click File, Import. I'm going to click on my grid. And then in this lattice import dialog, we're going to specify to import as a curvilinear lattice so that we can see the different z values of the grid. And then we're going to choose to use the component minimum for the blame z values. I'm going to click OK. And then we'll see our grid file appear over here in the network manager. So I'm going to select the grid, right click, and click graphics output, height field. So now we can see, we turn the cross section off, we can see our surface layer for each of our well paths. All right, so I'm going to repeat the same process and create the grid for the second layer using the XYZ data from Shatter. So I'm going to go back to Surfer. I'm going to make a new worksheet, and then I'm just going to highlight each of the second layers again. So I'm making sure that I'm clicking on the second number one, and that way we have the second layer. Okay, so now I have the second layer. I'm going to save this again as a DAT file. And I'm going to change this one to layer 2. And click Save. And now I'm going to create my grid file. And then this time I'm going to use the same ABC Krieging. And then I want to have the same grid line limits. So I'm going to enter the same ones that I got from Voxer last time. And I'm going to change my number of notes to 100 by 100, so that way we have uniform grids. And I'll click OK. So my grid file's been created. Now I'm going to go back to Voxler, and I'm going to import this one. And we're going to do the same thing as Curver Linear Lattice. And then add a height field to it. And now we can see that we have the second surface layer for our well paths. So I've already saved this a little bit of time, and I've generated additional level files, and then already imported them to Voxler. So I'm going to open up this file now. Now that you can see the six different layers. And so you can see our different well path, our well paths along with our six different layers. I also modify the colors of the height fields, that way they match the same layers of my well paths. So now I'm going to take a break for questions. Does anybody have any questions about importing grid files in from Surfer? Okay, so the first question is, can you select multiple rows at the same time by clicking Control and Copy?
So you can do that in the Surfer worksheet. So if you mean, if I have my Stratter export file, and if I go to the first row and just hitting Control and then select the second row, you can do that as well and then copy those entire rows into a worksheet file. And that would save you a little bit of copying and pasting time. Let's see any other questions. So the first or so the next question is, what if I don't have Shatter? Can I still create the surface grid files? So you can still create the surface grid files without exporting your XYZ data from Shatter. So to do this, if as long as you know the XYZ location for each layer in the well, then you can just manually enter that into the DAP file and grid that in Surfer. Let's see. All right, any other questions? So it looks like the last question is, when I import my grid file, it's not in the correct Z location. How did I, or what did I do wrong? So when the grid file is imported as a curve or linear lattice and displayed as a height field, then it will be in the correct XYZ location as specified in the grid. However, if the grid is imported as a uniform lattice, then the Z axis is going to be imported at Z equals zero. So it looks like that's it for questions. So now the next step is, is going to be to generate a 3D solid area of the data, or from the data, so that the XYZ, each XYZ layer is filled in with appropriate colors. So by the end, for this yellow section between the two grids, we're going to have a solid 3D area in between each. So we'll have a yellow one, then one for the orange, and each layer will be a nice solid. So to do this, I'm going to start by importing my XYZ data from Strata into Voxler. So I'm going to click File, Import. I'm going to find my Strata, plot, or my Strata export. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to choose to import these as well. And my XYZ are correct for XYZ. Then I'm going to change my single component to be column F in my data. And then I'm going to click OK. So now over here, I have my data file from Shatter. So to create a 3D model, I'm going to grid it by right-clicking on Computational Gridder. So with the green dot right next to the gridder module, it knows that it hasn't been gridded yet. So I'm going to accept the default gridding parameters and just click Begin Gridding. And as soon as it turns green, the gridder module is ready to use. So if we were to connect a 3D module with the gridder, we would see a 3D solid block that fills this entire area. However, since I want to create the different layers, then we're going to use the math module to limit the area to a particular section. So we're going to walk through creating the first layer together. So first, I'm going to import this first grid file again, the top grid file, and the data so, it'll just, so that we, it's displayed just between the top grid file and the first layer. So I'm going to click File, Import. I'm going to click on my layer 1, click Open. And then this time, we're going to choose a uniform lattice so that it can be used with the math module. So this will ignore the Z value and give each XY the same value. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to right click on the grid module, click Computational Map. I'm then going to connect my level one, my layer one grid to my math module as lattice B. And then the math module in the property manager, I can enter my expression right here as an output component. So to do this, I'm going to enter my equation, and then I will tell you what my equation means. So for my equation, it means that if the z value is less than my level 1 grid, which I connected as lattice B, then it should be replaced with a 0. If not, then it will use the value from the gridder, which is my level A. So now I'm going to go ahead and click my, or add a ball render to this model. And we can see at the top that the grid file was clipped right at the top of that cert, or top layer. However, if you notice, it still goes all the way down. Well, we can add another we can add another math module and the limit the volumes that way. It's just right above this layer. So to do this, I first need to import my layer 2, and that way I can use it as the second boundary file. I'm going to import as a uniform lattice. I'm going to turn off this fall render. And then I'm going to add a math module to the, current, to the current math module by clicking computational and then math. 
and I'm going to specify my layer 2 to be map. Okay, and so in this math module, let me enter my equation and I'll explain this one. So this one's pretty much similar to the last one, meaning that if z is going to be greater than layer 2, then I'll replace with the 0. If not, then I'm going to use a value from the previous math module. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us that solid section, just remove everything above, above my, or below my second layer. So I'm going to add a fall render to this one. And now we can see the different surface, or this layer surface, extends just in that desired area. So I'm going to change the color to be yellow, so that way it matches my grid files. And then I'm going to decrease the opacity so I can see the well pass through it. And so now if I look at that layer, I can see right through it and I can see my well pass, and the layer fills perfectly in between those two areas. So to save time, I've already done the rest of the process with the different layers, so that way you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to open that one up now. All right, so as you look at this one, you'll see that we have our different well paths along with a different color 3D model representing each layer. So I'm going to take a break and ask if anybody has any questions relating to creating a 3D module in Voxler. So the first question is, I see that you're using a math module to blank the wall render in between the server grids. Can you explain what the equation is doing? Sure. The math module will create a new lattice using one or more of the lattices and then applying and using a, a mathematical expression. So the output lattice, which is in this case is going to be each of our layers, is going to be calculated from one node at a time by applying the expression to the input from the input lattices. So in the modules that I created, I use the math modules to limit the 3D module to be displayed just below one grid file and above another grid file. So if you look in the network manager, for this model, you'll see that we have each layer has two different modules. One will be its top limit, and the second is going to be its bottom limiting one. Any other questions? All right, so we're going to move on now and use Digger. So as the final part of the process, we're going to use Digger to get an aerial image of the surfer or of the surface, and that way we can replace the yellow top of the surface and make it look more realistic with an image of the area. So to do this, I'm going to open up Digger 5, and then I'm going to click Image, Download Online Maps. So now you'll see Digger's online WMS client, which is the Download Online Maps dialog. And this is a new feature that was implemented in Digger 5. So under the Source Data section, I'm going to expand imagery. And then I'm going to expand the NAIP color imagery one. Then I'm going to select the layer right below that, which is the ortho imagery USGS EDC ortho NAIP layer. So then as you can see in the preview window, the entire US is displaying. However, I want to just limit the preview to our area of interest. So to do this, I'm going to change this to under select area to download. I'm going to change it to specify lot long extents. And then I'm going to enter in my my coordinates, so if you bear with me. And then I want a fairly high resolution, so I'm going to adjust this slider so that I'm going to download 5 megabytes. And then I'm going to click OK to download my area. So since our project, our Voxer project is in state plane coordinates, I'm going to then want to change my projection of my map, which I just downloaded in that lat long, to state plane. We can actually use Digger to re-project our map so that way it's in state plane instead of lat long. 
So to do this, I'm going to use the map change projection command. Click map, change projection. And then in the inside coordinate system dialogs, I want to select the desired state plane coordinate system. So to do that, I'm going to go back to projected systems, state plane. And then this one's in 1927. And then I'm going to go down to Wyoming. And click Wyoming Central Feet. And then I'm going to click OK. And this is going to let it digitally project it. So now that it's been reprojected into the correct coordinates, I'm going to go ahead and export this as a TIFF image. So I'm going to click File, Export. I'm going to save this as an aerial image. That way we know which one's which. I'm going to change it to a, tag, a TIFF tag image. And I'm going to click Save. In this dialog, I can specify the settings, so I'm going to click OK. All right, now if I go back to a Voxler, I can import this in there by clicking File, Import, and then clicking on our aerial image. And since I want this aerial image to overlay onto my top surface, I'm going to overlay it onto my top height field. So to do that, I'm going to click on my TIFF image and connect it with the height field and change that to Connect Input Overlay. So when I first see this, you won't see anything happen, so I'm going to click on my height field and then click on the Overlay tab in the Property Manager and check to Show Overlay. And then I just want to see my overlay TIFF image colors and not the yellow. So now we can see our 3D module that's displaying our well paths along with our surface tops and then the 3D representation of each color. And then using Digger, we got an aerial image. So this concludes the list of webinar topics. So now that you've seen a larger example of the Voxer compatibility, does anyone have any final questions about this? So the first question is, I want to purchase Voxer and Surfer and Stratter, but I do not receive a discount, or do I receive a discount if I purchase all three? So we do not offer a discount for purchasing separate gold and software programs. However, if you purchase your online order before May 2nd, 2014, then you'll actually you'll automatically receive 10% off of your entire order. So you can find our order form by going to goldensoftware.com, and there's a Buy Now button at the top. Does anybody else have any other questions? Well, this will conclude the Voxer Compatibility Webinar. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me directly at cassie at goldensoftware.com. I'll put my email up there. And you can also email drew at goldensoftware.com, or give us a call at 303 Two seven nine one zero two one. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.